Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to take a look at the process of optimization. So optimization is the calculation of a maximal or minimal value for a function given a set of constraints. This is a process that involves the application of finding absolute extrema, which we've done before, but now applied to real life functions. So in general, we're going to kind of go through four main steps. We're going to first identify a mathematical model for the situation. That can be anything from area and volume to a cost function, or in some cases even distance and rate of change, just depends on the situation. So we're going to identify that mathematical model. Then we're going to calculate or piece through a reasonable interval for the situation. We're going to find absolute extrema. And then finally, we'll draw a conclusion. Which of these scenarios creates either the maximal or minimal situation that we're being asked for? So let's take a look at one of these problems. So let's say we have a farmer who has 800 feet of fence for constructing a rectangular corral. One side of the corral will be formed by his barn, so therefore that side won't require any fencing. The farmer needs four separate rectangular regions inside the corral. So what dimensions of the corral would maximize that enclosed area? So here we kind of have a visual representation of that. We have this red side here, that's the barn, so there's no fencing being used there. Then we have an X by Y rectangle, and then we've got these three strips on the inside breaking our area in the middle into those four separate regions. So if we think about each of these X's and Y's represents an amount of fencing. So we have one, two, three, four, five fencing lengths of X plus this long one that is parallel to the barn here, so 5x plus y, and that needs to add up to 800 feet of fencing. So this is what we would call our constraint. This is what we have to work within. Now we want to think about what is it that we want to optimize. In this case, we want to make a maximum area. So we know the area formula for a rectangle is x times y in this case, or length times width. So this is what we're going to want to find the maximum of. Now we want to make this area formula in terms of only one variable, x or y. It's really your choice which variable you want to use there. Um, and we're going to use our constraint function to replace one of these variables. So when I look at my constraint function, I see that it's gonna be a bit easier for me to solve that constraint function for y. So doing that, I would get y is equal to 800 minus 5x. If I now replace that into my area function, I will have that area equals x times 800 minus 5x, or if I distribute that x, area equals 800x minus 5x squared. So now we have an equation or a function here for the area of our rectangular corral that is only in terms of one variable. So that allows us to more easily take the derivative and find its place where it is maximal. So before we take the derivative and find any critical points, let's come up with the reasonable interval that we might be working on. So here we need to think about, okay, what is the smallest that x could be? And what is the largest that x could be? That gives us our reasonable interval. So if we think about the smallest x could be, well, I guess technically x could be zero. We could have no length here, and then y would just extend for 800 feet. Now obviously that doesn't make a whole lot of sense in terms of actually building a corral, but we're just getting endpoints here. 
the largest x could be would be is if y were very, very small. So if we took our constraint function here and we let y go to zero, then we would have 5x equals 800 dividing by five there, we would get x equals 160. So the largest possible value of x would be 160 feet. So those are kind of going to be our end points. So next we'll see if our function for our area has any critical points in that interval. We'll do that by taking our first derivative a prime. So that will be 800 minus 2 times 5 or 10x. Critical points can come from where our derivative is either zero or undefined. Our derivative here is linear, so it will not be undefined, but if we set it equal to zero and solve, we get 800 equals 10x. Dividing both sides by 10, we get x equals 80 as a critical point. All right, so now we want to test each of our endpoints and our critical point by plugging them back into our area function and seeing which value leads to a maximum area. So we have 0, 80, and 160 that we want to test. So a of 0 would give us an area of 0. A of 80, again, I'm just plugging this back into this area formula, would give me an area of 32,000 square feet. And an A of 160 would also yield zero as the area. So there's a pretty clear maximum here. That occurs when X is equal to 80 feet. Now we want to make sure that we answer the full question here and that full question was what are the dimensions of the corral? So we have our x dimension, x equals 80 feet, but we want to make sure we also give our y dimension. Well right here we have a formula for y in terms of x. So let's go ahead and solve that when x equals 80. So y will be equal to 800 minus 5 times 80, or 400 feet. All right, so we want to end by writing down a conclusion statement that fully answers the question. So the dimensions that create a maximum area are 80 feet by 400 feet. All right guys, that does it for this video on optimization. To see more examples of this process, catch you in the next video.